Um, I've spoken a lot about on this podcast a couple of times about um, Andrew Schultz. And I've spoken about how conflicted I am because I'm an actual fan of his. More so about his, more so for his like marketing and his branding and his hustle and just his like, you know, um, creativity when it comes to how he's basically presented and brought himself on social media in terms of stand up comedy. Because myself being a somewhat aspiring DJ, I understand how hard it is to do what he's doing to put yourself out there to record videos of yourself on the selfie camera talking about what you're doing promoting it promoting it promoting it it's very difficult to do putting clips together uploading them making sure they're funny blah 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 it's difficult but it's the necessary evil if you want to get booked same with me if i want to if i want to dj nightclubs and stuff i have to do more live streams i have to do more clips but again i'm lazy to do them i make excuses uh, it's it's long to do i have to carry the equipment i make excuses regardless but uh, Shorts does it but during his recent special that he obviously released now called Infamous he started to become a little bit annoying because he's starting to create these fake scenarios I feel like in order to make himself the hero of his own story and in, in my opinion I think most of these occasions that he's talking about and instances to back up his special are lies he's spoken about being hacked um What's the other thing he spoke about? He spoke about being hacked. He spoke about being censored. He spoke about um, he spoke about uh, stuff being taken down on Instagram and shit. And he keeps creating these boogeymen. I feel like in his mind, in order to get his fans to rally behind him, so they can keep pushing his special, put it in front of people's faces, and keep selling it. And it just feels annoying because it feels very contrived. It feels very forced. And it just doesn't really lend to how he kind of comes across. Because he was, again, like him a lot as a personality, but Schultz does come across a bit cool. And in my opinion, I think this stuff makes him look the opposite of cool. It makes him look lame as hell that he's going to these sort of depths and going to these sort of levels to promote a special um, that most people won't even care about. Because in my opinion, I've always said, I think with comedians, I think I've I've proved it a couple of times on this comedy, on this comedy stream, whatever I do. Whenever I ask people on here, have you watched so-and-so's uh, fucking comedy special? You all say no. And I think there's a big majority of people who just don't watch comedy specials. They might watch your podcast, they might see clips on your subreddit, but they will never sit down and watch your half an hour special, let alone an hour special, right? So if that's the case, then when you do comedy specials, you're mostly doing it for your fans. You're not doing it for new fans. New fans are never going to watch your stuff, in my opinion. I don't think you're really going to... It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a cynical thing to say, but I don't think comedians find new fans from their comedy specials. I don't think so. I think the comedy specials are a way to kind of get your name out there, to get more sponsorship, to get your you know, to get people to like notice you, to get more brand deals and shit. But I don't think it necessarily gets you more fans. I think the fans you have are the fans you have. They maybe get cultivated through your podcast. But I don't think the random person will be like, oh, I don't know who Schultz is. Let me check him out, and then suddenly they're viewing him. If you're gonna watch Schultz's comedy special, you're gonna watch it because you like him as a friend. Cool. Anyway. So I think all this aggressive pushing of the of the comedy special is a bit pointless because if you haven't watched it by now, you're never going to watch it. I have, I have not watched it still, and I'm probably never going to watch it now, especially off the back of all this cringy, annoying stuff that he's doing. And the latest thing that he's doing now is that I guess when he launched the infamous podcast, he did similar to what Louis C.K. does. He had it all his own website. Louis C.K. has been doing this for years, so it's not a new thing. And then, but I guess his special hook that he had was that he was going to put it on his website for a short period for paid. And then after a while, it would then go free. I'd imagine. I think mean, I didn't read too much into it, but I'd imagine it would be like kind of free to stream, whatnot. But I guess if you're a fan and you really wanted to help him out and you wanted to watch the, watch the, watch the comedy special right now in that moment, then it'll be available to watch, uh, if you paid, you know, it would be, it would be behind a paywall, as, so to speak. But now, obviously, he's changed his mind, or he's part of the whole brand, he's part of the whole marketing ploy, and now he's doing this whole marketing thing about him being a capitalist pig, and he's changed, he's turned this into a whole new thing. And it's just annoying to me personally. So this is this latest little clip he put together on his Instagram page that I thought, in my opinion, just came across a little bit contrived, a little bit annoying, a little bit try-hard, and a little bit pathetic, in my opinion. But again, maybe I'm reading too much into it, maybe I'm a loser, maybe I need to do my own shit, maybe I'm a hater, blah, blah, blah. Regardless, let's check the clip and see what I'll go on, see what he's saying. I'm a greedy fucking capitalist pig. I said I was only going to sell the special for two weeks. I stopped the sale and an unreal amount of people reached out to me saying that they didn't get the chance to buy it. They just heard about it late. They had financial constraints. They said that they couldn't buy it just yet.
that it was fucking insane this week. And since I'm a greedy oh, sorry. fucking oinky. I think what he's saying is that he was wanting to sell it for a discounted price on sale for five dollars, and then he wanted to later on have it available for retail for fifteen. I think that was what he was trying to do. I'm not sure if that's right, but I think that's what he's getting at. Fat pig, I'm a fat greasy eat whatever. <laughs> Joe Rogan would shoot me in a helicopter to DSP. clear up the infestation that we are greedy fat pig. I'm putting the special back up. I <laughs> wanted to come on here and I want to be like, I'm doing it for you so the good people at home could get to experience my comment. No, I'm a greedy, fat, greasy. All right. Having watched the video, it is quite funny. The fact that he's legitimately fessing up and owning up to the greed and the capitalism and the piggy nature of it and the horrible nature of it and the real scummy nature of it. Because I remember before he had this bit where he was like, um, what's it, what's it think? Um, how he was a hypocrite. Right, and you kind of lent into it, like being Hippocrates and shit. So I do like he has some level of self-awareness, but it's still a bit annoying. Pig, and I want money, okay? That is the real fucking reason. Okay, so if you go to theandrewschultz. You can help feed my fat, greedy gut. Now that I got that part out, that I'm not proud, I can tell you that I'm genuinely fucking floored by the support and I'm, it means a fucking world to me and thank you guys so much. But what is also true on the other side is if you had a trough here full of money, I would just <laughs> the whole thing up, eat it, snort it, chew on it. I'm going to find a way to give some money to charity once I'm dead. <laughs> that's funny. Come on. That's good. That's good. I'm a greedy that's good. 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 <laughs> find money. Look, I think in general, you know what's funny about this sort of stuff? I was just, I was thinking about just now. Do you think most of these guys actually only have podcast fans that are comedy fans? Like, do you think they're actual, do you think there actually exist Andrew Schultz stand up comedy fans only that don't watch his podcast? Or do you think all these fans come from his podcast? It must be a really weird place to be as a stand up comedian where all your fans only like you because of what you say on podcasts, but don't actually like you on the... But yeah, only like you because you're a podcast and they watch your stand-up because of that. But they don't find you that funny. They just, they just want to support you because they like you. Because of the thing about podcasts, it creates like a parasocial relationship, like you and I, right? I feel like I know you guys to the point where I'm taking my laptop on vacation because I want to talk to you guys because you're my e-friends, right? I don't have any real friends, so why not talk to you guys? I could be in a club somewhere grinding on some fucking something, something big and meaty, right? But instead, I'm over here talking to you guys. So clearly, there's a connection that we have. So let's say I put out a stand-up special. Even if it's terrible, you'll probably still support me because you like me as a streamer, not me as a comedian. So it must be the same for these kind of guys. Like they get more love being the podcaster vis the actual stand-up. So it must be a bit of a mindfuck for them, isn't it? Don't you think? Like they are, it must be a little bit annoying. Like people don't actually like them for their comedic mind. They only like them for them, which might explain why people like Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock and stuff, why those guys are very hesitant to do their own podcast. They just do stand up comedy. They don't want to be looked at as a podcaster because they don't want people to like, like them for a podcast. They don't want people to only like them for their stand up comedy and their acting and stuff. But you know what I mean? What do you think? Maybe I'm, anyway, maybe I'm drunk and I'm just talking on my ass. I don't really know. But honestly, guys, all my life, right? I've had one full beer. Was that one full beer? Yeah, I've had one full beer. See that, right? One full beer and one half a beer, and I'm already lit. I don't know how Unix does it. I really don't know how Unix does it, but I want to find out. So I do think I'm going to reach out to Unix soon, and I'm going to make sure that I find out how Unix does this whole fucking getting lit on stream and shit. I want to find out how he does it, but... Whew. 